reinventing joy. In this scenario, we're given a certain capacity for joy, meted out like blood, measured. Everyone has roughly the same capacity pending unexpected birth trauma. In this scenario, joy bubbles through us, rising on occasion to epidermis, flushing at base amusement, flashing in ecstasy, tangling its way with heat not unlike medical dyes injected for laboratory tests. By this I mean you feel it precisely like a road map through self. Enjoyable, coursing sensation once fear is overcome. Therefore, your first joyous experience starts like bowels rumbling, but you're too young for fright or curiosity. You're merely hungry, feeding off mother, her sweet milk mingled with jubilation, rushing to your belly's estuary, then it stops. Joy dissipates like sweat. Supplies diminish, capacity reduced, but you don't really know this yet, won't understand till later when learning and reason prevail and science establishes order. You may have your way with joy, they say. Experience explosions, venal vibrations, various fibrillations, tempered titillations. However, joy evaporates with each release. In this scenario, actuaries calculate joy expectancy. Cross-purpose grids define relative happiness expelled on various ceremonial occasions, weddings, for example, and bar mitzvahs. None are true valuations. For who can oral differences made when dragonflies visit particular me or daisies tease he loves me, loves me not? Who can predict pure measures released by poetry? What life will you live now? Will you deprive yourself of sunsets? Store joy to ease your passing. Go peacefully to rapture, no morphine need or prayer. Or will you plunge into each moment Dive high with open arms. Fly before each cool, ecstatic splash. It does. There's a postdoc to operate a mic stand. <laughs> or a union card. Uh, okay.